Hi, very warm welcome to you. Um, if your evening's boring and you've got a few minutes to spare, join me. Um, whilst you know we mess about with a few electronic components and um, see if we can blow the man cave up. <laughs> and yeah, so today in the post we had our Pisos come, and I don't know if many people know this. You should do. Uh, I bet a few of you do. If you squeeze Pisos, you can get them to produce a little bit of electricity just by squeezing them. And if you put sound through them, uh, they act like a speaker. So on our little uh, HHO generator, we've got one on every face. So there's on every side of the box, there's a piezo and it's at the same level as the HHO generator, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, well, I might as well just give you a quick look now and you'll see for yourself. So, is our HHO generator just here and we've got the piezos attached to every face at the same height as the um, HHO generator is. I'll just uh, switch it on I'll, I'll put the frequency on a bit later on for you but I just wanted to show you uh, without sound uh, just using that electrolysis uh, if you watch in between the two tubes in there the white ones you'll see Lots of bubbles of gas um, coming up. And it's that gas rate we want to improve. What that's, uh, what's uh, rising up now is hydrogen and oxygen gas, which is being separated by electrolysis. We also, not only do we have the piezo uh, speakers um, attached to the faces of the container at the same height as the electrolysis that's taking place. I'll just switch that off for a minute. Uh, we also have a coil wrapped around uh, two radiators, which one is obviously uh, charged with a positive and the other one's a negative. And it's from the positive that we get the hydrogen and from the negative we get that very corrosive gas, um, oxygen. Um, just one other thing I wanted to show you before we, um, whilst we're on the topic of things that generate electricity, I've got a Peltier element here and another LED attached to it and I'll just show you what happens when you heat the one side of a Peltier element. So I'll get the little torch, put that on, get that off and as you can see it, it lit the LED just by heating the Peltier element. Now I have seen people um, mech with their log burners at home um, Peltier element generators. Uh, you need a load of them but you put the one face on the heat you have to keep obviously then uh, a cool jacket around the back of the Peltier element because as you just seen there uh, what eventually happens is the heat sinks through to the back of the plate and then uh, it stops to produce electricity once the back of the plate the Peltier element gets the same temperature as the front uh, it stops to produce electricity but if you've got a water tank or a, um, a water jacket on the back of there and you put that on your log burner you can generate electricity um, you know, it just shows you different ways in which you can create electricity. And uh, I, I did squeeze this a little bit too hard earlier and um, I caused it to crack. But, you know, just squeezing it just gives it a little bit of electricity. Anyhow, um, what we're here to find out is whether the um, piezo speakers or sounders are improving our uh, experiment. And, up to now, um, you know, I, don't, I haven't seen any real improvement with it, but that could be for a lot of reasons. Uh, we could have the wrong frequency. We might be amplifying at the wrong sound, uh, at the wrong volume, so we're not putting enough amps into the into the speakers for them to actually fracture the water molecule or help in the aid of fracturing the water molecule. Um, and if that is the case, if these speakers, these piezos, aren't strong enough for this. Then I've got these industrial ones here, and they're really chunky. These are they're quite heavy. They feel like a piece of lead. And this is a piezo. Uh, this is an industrial one that's used for uh, what is it? I've written it down. I keep forgetting. Um, it's used for ultrasonic cleaning. Uh, so in your ultrasonic cleaners, you'll find these piezos, and we've got two of them uh, coming the post today. So you know we'll be wiring them up and just seeing how we get on with them. I've got a feeling these are going to probably produce a better effect for us. 
So, you know, there are, as you know, many ways in which you can um, generate electricity. You know, there's just a few that you might not have come across. But, you know, there is the standard one uh, where you use a generator uh, to power, you know, uh, it could be a hydro generator. This is an old thing I built just to demonstrate to, you know, uh, younger people how electricity can be generated. So this is an old thing. I don't think it works anymore, but you used to be able to connect this to the battery. This motor powers this motor, which is not connected to the battery, and then in turn, it produces electricity which lights up all the lights the faster it goes you know the more lights it lights up um, so you know I've played with a lot of different things that that are able to produce electricity and some of them aren't the obvious ways in which some people would think I mean you could with a piezo generator I suppose turn it into sort of a wind generator if you add a piece of plastic strip coming off this and you add that say clamped in a vice just for instance as the wind blew the strip it would bend the piezo and as it done that you would get you know like a lighting effect i know it's not you have to really press it hard if you want to get it to light the led up really bright but you know if you had this thing moving backwards and forwards it would light the led up if you had a thousand of them then obviously you're generating a little bit more power than is required to run one LED and you could run a thousand LEDs or you could charge up your mobile phone or a laptop. You know, just a, a another unique and novel way of you know producing electricity. And of course you can produce electricity by burning a gas which is what we're open to do. Uh, what we want to do is get a method of um, electrolysis which is you know not requiring 15 amps at so many volts. We want it to you know, I think if we can get it to run at half of amp or one amp and produce enough gas to run maybe a generator, then it becomes useful because you're not using all the power of the generator to uh, produce the amps to split the water molecule. So that's where we are with that. And, um, you know, I'll keep you informed as we go on along this road uh, with this experience you know this little experiment to see if we can just make it a little bit more efficient maybe we'll come up with a new um, novel way of increasing the yield of gas um, you know like I said yesterday in the video I could produce more gas if I wanted to by using these stuffed inside a stock and on the outside of the stock just dunk that in the water put a positive on the inside of the sock and negative on the outside and it would generate with um, you know, uh, a different uh, electrolyte in there, maybe um, hydroxide of some sort. Uh, you could put in there, you could put baking powder in there. That, you know, I know a lot of people have had good results from that. And you could generate a lot of gas. It's at this point, it's not about the quantity, it's about using as small of amps as possible and just seeing what else encourages that fracture. And right now, we're using electrolysis, we're using frequency. And we've also got this thing in a um, magnetic field. There's a big magnet at the bottom of that as well. Um, so, you know, all these little things might just tweak it all the way along the way. And we might get at the end of it, you know, a reasonable result. That's what we're looking for. So, you know, yeah, stay, stay tuned. On the topic of something else. You know, the UK and the American government at the moment are saying that they're not at war with Yemen and you know this is the sort of thing that turn people off you know the uh, mainstream media legacy media you know when obviously the United Kingdom is dropping bombs in Yemen on targets so their soldiers then you know and Yemen is firing missiles at you know British ships British uh, military ships and American ships then that to me is a war i think it is you would agree that that is the case as well you know this is a war but they're saying no it's not a war well you know what is it foreplay for god's sakes this is a war you know there's missiles getting exchanged and has been for the last week so regardless of what they say it is a war and you know right now the middle east is is up in flames you've got just you know it's hard to keep a track i said this was going to happen you know things are going to start coming thick and fast 
in the world. It is breaking down our world, is I believe that we we you know the world we knew has gone, and this is the new world now that we've got. We've got the lying that's taking place with regards to the climate, you know, the thieving of taxpayers' money, uh, the corruption at highest levels in governments and other businesses, and you know, you've got business espionage taking place. It, it's absolutely bonkers. The world's gone mad. Uh, just look at the Middle East and the amount of wars. Pakistan firing missiles at Iran. Iran firing missiles at Iraq and Pakistan. Houthis firing missiles at anything that moves in the Red Sea. You know, regardless, it just needs to be afloat and they'll fire at it. You know, and then you've got the Ukraine and Russia. You've got China wanting to take Taiwan back and threatening, you know, military action there. It's, and then you've got Lebanon attacking Israel, Syria attacking Israel. You know, it, it's getting out of hand. And um, like I said in a previous video, how many countries that, that are at war with each other um, does it take to qualify as a world war? We are moving, obviously, right this very moment in that direction. I think you would agree. But the, the worst thing about all this is, is that, you know, Pakistan are a nuclear arms race you know they they've got the nuclear bomb india's got the nuclear bomb you know they're right bang in the middle of the middle east and you know right now there is an exchange between iran and pakistan with missiles flying backwards and forwards over their borders just insane you know isn't it you know you, that's why i said there's no human continuity plan i, I just think that they are you know, they don't care or they don't realise how, how dangerous a situation it is at the moment. You know, and uh, telling us people uh, a, a pack of lies is is um, the reason why we're losing the trust in the media and the governments. You know, they can just talk as much as they want because I think you're like me. You're just not going to listen to them anymore, are we? we? We've just done enough. You know, we've seen the fruit of their works. And um, we've seen how they squander money, uh, you know, so, you know, people will lose interest in and trust in the uh, mainstream organisations. I mean, at Davos, they're crying, you know, we've lost the narrative. We no longer are the gatekeepers of information and press. It's because people have their own specifics that they, they are looking for, like yourselves. You know, if you've got an interest in a particular topic, you're going to look for that information at, from a source where you're going to get it. It's like if you're interested in geomagnetics and magnetic reversals. I mean, a lot of people, despite what people say, you know, you know, we record, uh, you know, the data for you. And we've got a dedicated website just to the magnetic pole reversal. Uh, we still do that once a month, even though, you know, all our support is virtually gone. You know, if it weren't for, you know, our patrons sticking with us, you know, I don't know where we would be. And, uh, you know, if I get a, a few quid here and there, you know, I invest it um, in things like this, Peltier elements, you know, and, or, sorry, uh, Paizo crystals and Peltier elements. And, you know, we do other experiments and show you the results of that. You know, this, I think, is worthwhile doing. You know, it could change if, if something successful comes out of this. And I think, you know, I think a lot of these ideas have been done before. But the, there are so many variables here. Um, you know, someone might have done something similar, but not exactly the same. I mean, right now we're using electrolysis, frequency, magnetism, and, um, you know, anything else I can think of. If you can think of something you want me to try in, in on that HHO generator that you think might improve it let me know um if that's you know um uh, changing the electrolyte in there i know potassium hydroxide is probably one of the best but it also gives off fumes and uh you know what we're trying to do here we shouldn't really even be using uh, sodium chloride salt ordinary salt household salt um because what we're trying to do is improve the electrolysis process so we we probably could do the same without we could get results but not as um 
quantitative as we are what we are with the um, you know using the electrolyte salt um, I think it's just like I said there's so many variables with this there's so many frequencies we can try we can try adjusting the volume so more ramps are being pushed into the actual uh, fluid uh, into the water and that might help fr fracture it that's what we want to do is just keep fracturing and improving the fracturing of the water molecule you know breaking it into its um you know uh, subatomic ele elements you know like hydrogen oxygen so you know what crazy world we live in yeah are we the, the the smartest and brightest animals on the planet let me know in the description what you think give me your ideas of what you what you think is going on around the world right now and um you know all of a sudden isn't it strange how all of a sudden we find ourselves you know surrounded by all this all this trouble makes you wonder doesn't it what come what is going to come next because I guarantee before the week's out, and we're on Monday today, I guarantee before the week's out there'll be something else, startling and alarming. And th the thing is, we're getting pacified by this. You know, the more we see, the more we adjust to becoming used to it. It doesn't shock you in the end. You know, so when we start to see, you know, more graphic images of people being shot and killed and whatever, or we hear more about the governments, you know, sending money here, there and everywhere, but doing nothing at home with it, you know, not helping uh, the people of their own country get through one of the toughest times in, you know, in a hundred years. You know, I'm talking about the, um, you know, the, the crisis with regards to poverty that people find themselves in at the moment. You know, you go in the shops, uh, every time I go in the shops, just like you, Prices have gone up again. Prices are going up all the time. And yet they say inflation's coming down. To, they say in, in the UK, inflation's at 3.9, is it? No way. Because if it is, then your shops are just taking advantage of a situation here and not passing on, you know, that uh, um, better price to the, con the consumers. But I think it's the government lying because they lie about everything, don't they? You know, like I said, you know, when they say it's north, it's usually safe. If they say it's hot, it's usually cold. That's the truth. So anyhow, thanks for your time. You know, um, um, there's a link there if you want to help support what we do, some of these things. Uh, entirely up to you. It's not mandatory. And uh, if you have uh, pledged a little bit of support over the last few days, you know, I want to thank you for that. And I'm sure some of our subscribers want to thank you as well and um, you know we're still here and if you've got nothing better to do on your evening and to put a video up there then why not get yourself a cup of tea and watch it i'll say what i usually do guys you be safe take care of your loved ones as always bye for now